There's literally less than one month left and things are going to go from bad to worse as guess what is restarting in October, guys? That's right, student loan payments. I can't make this crap up. And do you know what else can actually get worse here? Some students are saying that they're not gonna pay a dime. They're literally planning to not pay a cent. So what do borrowers need to know right now? Well, 43 million folks are shaking right now. They'll try to figure out where's this money going to come from. October 1st is the date that that first payment is due. The average borrower pays about 400 bucks a month in loans uh, or will pay about 400 bucks a month. 55% of students leave the quad with a diploma and a payment book. So this goes throughout all kinds of uh, demographics, touches just about every American family out there. 17% of adults have at least one student loan. It's big. It's a big deal, Bill. Absolutely. So, so what if you can't pay? Well, and that's the thing. According to a recent survey, 62% of borrowers say they either can't pay or they don't plan to pay. That's probably not a good idea. Um, here's the thing called an on-ramp. So this on-ramp that the government has implemented basically says for the first 12 months, starting uh, starting October 1st, for the first 12 months, you will be charged interest, but if you don't pay, we are not gonna report you to the credit agency so it won't damage your credit. So the meter's running, but at least we're not gonna be damaging your credit. By the way, that's not a that's not a great plan for most Americans. Well, what do you think about that? You see a lot of these folks held on to hope, right? Hope that someone else was gonna pay for their loans, for the debt that they acquired on their own. Do you wanna pay somebody else's bill? Don't sign me up for that. Somebody else was supposed to be on the hook for all this stuff, but you know, just as the saying goes, promises are meant to be broken. Mr. President, why did you get millions of borrowers false hope? You've dated, doubted your own authority here in the past. I didn't give any false hope. The question was whether or not if I would do even more than was requested. What I did I thought was appropriate and was able to be done and would get done. I didn't give Boris false hope, but the Republicans snatched away the hope that it was, they were given, and it's real, real hope. Thank Mr. you. Mr. President, will you cancel your authority? Did you overstep your authority? I think the court misinterpreted the Constitution. So what are you guys' thoughts on this? And what do you say for students who plan to boycott their payments altogether? The idea is that if all 46 million students just don't pay a dime, then the government would have to be forced to enact total debt forgiveness. That's the strategy. Hmm. I'm not really sure if things work that way. And well, now it's probably time to realize that the system wasn't built to provide this kind of stuff. It wasn't built to give out free money because in all honesty, nothing is free, right? No free lunches, that kind of thing. Oh wait, I know a couple of things that are free. Smashing the like button and also subscribing for your daily dose of the truth. Those two things are always gonna be free. I swear, no strings attached. I totally appreciate the support, you guys. But seriously, getting back on topic, right? Like if you ask me, this entire boycott could affect all of us. Although I don't think that each student will agree and I'm pretty darn sure that some of them already do have plans as to how they're gonna be repaying their student loans. Now, for those who don't, well, maybe they're in the same boat as a lot of other people who are literally just, you know, having a lot of trouble covering their daily expenses, especially purchases that require the use of their credit card. Department store Macy's just reported that there's been a spike in customers failing to make their credit card payments. And guess what? It is literally so bad that credit card revenues for this year alone has crashed by 36% due to delinquencies. Now, if you go ahead and mix that with the student loan payments and well, we got a recipe for a massive disaster. Soon enough, people are going to have to make even tougher choices in Walmart or Target. You know, questions like, okay, do we have enough money to buy food? Uh, or do we pay for your debt? You see where I'm going with this, guys? People gonna pay for food. They ain't gonna just pay for the debt and walk around hungry. And I mean, it's not just food and student loans, you know? But how is this happening when the economy is just so strong? There's something puzzling is happening in Iowa. It's easy for me to say. The unemployment rate is down, but demand for food banks in Iowa is actually skyrocketing right now. An economics professor we spoke with says this is flying in the face of what they know about poverty and wage growth. As KCRG TV United State Capitol reporter Connor Hendricks reports, more than a a third of Iowans aren't making ends meet. While the unemployment rate nationwide remains pretty low, here at the Food Bank of Iowa, demand is up 75% since last year. 36% of Iowa households are not making enough to make ends meet, and that's what brings them to our partner food pantries. And that hacker with the Food Bank of Iowa says every month sets a new record for demand. Well, SNAP benefits have changed. Again, those pandemic era uh, benefits are, are no longer available. 
grocery prices are high. So even though inflation is stabilizing, it costs a lot to go to the grocery store. Anyone here who can relate to this? Now I'm guessing there's probably a lot of folks who are being forced to do this now because what else can they do? By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video and never ever ever be caught off guard by another very expensive, unexpected home repair again. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. Now guys, the worst part is that we may actually see the price of everything go up again as gas prices continue to hover around the $4 range on average. Usually this time of year after the vacations have ended and the kiddos are headed back to school, we get a reprieve at the pump. Not this year. Take a look. If you want to get sub $4 a gallon of gasoline, you need to pay cash. If you're using a credit card, obviously it's more. And it doesn't look like we're going to see relief for about another month or six weeks. There's no mistaking the disappointment when gas pumping bleeds your wallet dry. It's going through the roof again, man. It was nice when it was a little bit lower. It's going to be putting a crunch on a lot of people, you know what I mean? It's always good to get a little perspective on the gas price situation. AAA Michigan says our statewide average today is $3.91, 4 cents less than this week last year. Now let's think about this logically, right? Like, how are goods moved around in our country? Or heck, let's just talk about it on a global scale, all right? Like, what pushes these boats, these trucks, trains, like airplanes, anything that moves or delivers goods to and from suppliers? Well, you guessed it, fossil fuels. Like, we don't have electric trains, electric uh, trucks. Well, some of them, but it's like 1% of the whole truck fleet. There's like no electric airplane. So, yeah. Now, with gas becoming more and more expensive, who do you think is actually going to be paying the difference? Any guesses? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right consumers you and me guys we ain't got no choice in the matter and here i thought that the inflation problem was getting better right well it's obviously not going in the direction that they wanted to and and maybe just maybe it has something to do with how our government loves to spend money. You know what I'm saying here? So even Jerome Powell had to admit that inflation's still way too high and that we have to prepare for an even longer fight. I mean, is anybody really surprised by this at all at this point? On inflation would depend on both the unwinding of the unprecedented pandemic-related demand and supply distortions and on our tightening of monetary policy, which would slow the growth of aggregate demand allowing supply time to catch up. While these two forces are now working together to bring down inflation, the process still has a long way to go, even with the more favorable recent readings. So this is basically him saying that they're probably most likely going to keep raising rates well into 2024 or until everybody in this country just kind of ups and loses their jobs. Man, if only we caught on early that inflation wasn't transitory, huh? But what are your thoughts on all this, guys? Are we close to solving this entire problem? Or is it a problem that just won't end until government figures out how to stop spending trillions of dollars and sending it over to the Ukraine? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Before I go, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for the likes on the video. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next one.